10.65 foot-pounds. I'm legal, and how do I know that? Well, I've got the CB625 to tell me. Welcome to YouTubers, welcome to another video and today we're going to talk about chronographs and in particular we're talking about the CB625. Now a lot of you guys may have seen this out here and you're wondering what's this all about? Anyway, chronographs, why are they important? Well there's two major reasons. Number one, you may live in a country like I do in the UK where there's a legal limit for air rifles which in my case is 12 foot pound. To have anything over that power, I need to have a firearm certificate. Um, and it's extremely important. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's my responsibility. If I'm caught with a rifle over the legal limit, I'm committing a firearms crime. And I can be put away for that. So um, it is extremely important. So that's the first primary reason. And the second one is, because we're using air rifles, our pellets are moving a lot slower than normal cartridge bullets. Therefore, the curvature of the pellet trajectory has a big difference to us. Um, for example, if I cross centre my crosshairs at 20 metres um, and I'm zeroed at 20 metres, I know I'll put the crosshairs on the target at 20 metres, I'm going to hit it. If I go out to 40, 50, 60 metres, then I know and you know that we've got to lift up the crosshairs, in other words, lob the pellet into the target. That's what we call hold over. And you can sit down and work out the calculations or you can do it by eye and just remember what to do. But a lot of the times it's really handy to have to know what the pellet speed is coming out and therefore your power coming out. And then you can use things like applications like ballistic calculations, stuff like that. So there are quite a few different types of chrono that you can get. And I've got a couple of examples here. Um, here's one called an X, uh, X Core Tech. Um, this is primarily used for um, airsoft, but a lot of people have tried them for um, air rifles. And the idea is that you shoot through here and it displays on here the speed of the pellet. Um, I got one, I tried it, they're about 60, 70 pound and I couldn't get it to work properly. I'll leave a video, um, I can never remember, I think it's up that side. I'll leave a video lying around for it to show you. But um, no, nah, don't recommend these are two, but check the video out. Some people like them, some people swear blind by them, but it's too much problems. Then the other type that you get, and I'm sure you've all seen these, uh, what's called the Chrono F1s and you'll see different variants and there are many many different models of these but basically the idea is that you shoot through here the pellet leaves that side it's a fixed distance it knows how long it took therefore can work out the speed and it's displayed on the front here um, I'm going to do a review on this one as well but these tend to be more expensive so that then nicely brings us on to the Chrono uh, this chrono here, it's called a chronoscope um, and it's it's got the nickname, a really catchy name of the CB625, don't ask me why, um, and the latest one I believe is the Mark IV which this is here and obviously I'll leave some pictures around so you can take a look at it. So the whole idea of this is that you actually attach it to the end of your rifle, yeah that's where it goes, so it doesn't sit separate, it actually attaches to your rifle. Now that has a couple of, of obvious uh, points about it. Number one is that you can actually put this on the injury rifle and you don't have to worry about lining anything up afterwards once you've done it. You can then just look through your scope, point it in a safe direction, take your shot nice and easy. And that is a really, really good point with this. With these ones, you actually have to line up your rifle with where you're supposed to put the pellet and then make sure then that that is lined up with a safe backstop. Can be tricky. These ones are a little bit easier because there's a bigger area to aim through and as long as your target is down range and you've got a safe backstop, yeah. But if you're backyard clinking and stuff like this, these can be extremely easy and they're actually quite cheap. You can have these for about uh, 60 to 70 pounds. You may even find them cheaper on eBay. But um, yeah, quite a handy, handy little tool. And the way that you attach it on is with rubber bands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do Cut out right now and show you a, uh, a really quick session on how to fit this on here. And I've done it outside because it's easier to do with, uh, with Abby holding the camera so she can do a bit of zooming in for you. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to take the chrono on and off. 
Now, number one, you're gonna be playing with the pointy end of the rifle, so safety first. First things first, take your magazine out. Magazine out, fire the shot off. Do it again, just for safety's sake. Make sure you've definitely got nothing up there. Put your safety catch on. Now I'm as safe as I can possibly be now. But even so, I am not gonna stick my head and I'm gonna look down the end of that barrel. So I'm gonna keep the barrel pointing away from me. Okay, so now we're gonna take the chrono off. We're as totally as safe as possible, but I'm gonna keep my head away from the end of that barrel. I'm gonna point it away from me. First thing I wanna do is hold on tight to it and then basically take off the elastic bands that are holding it on place, just undo them. Keep hold of it so it doesn't fly all over the place and it slides off like so. To put it back on is just as simple. First thing you gotta do is get hold of your alignment tool. Put that in and that helps you line it up. Then we take the elastic bands and we wrap the elastic bands around. And this can be a bit fiddly to do. So wrap them around a couple of times. It's the first one on. And like I said, this can be a bit fiddly to do. Um, so get yourself comfortable while you're doing it. Take your time, wrap them around put at least two elastic bands on, use the lugs, and they're on. Level the whole thing off so it's level to, so for when you're shooting, and then just check the alignment again to make sure it's all in place. Now, I do recommend doing a following check, and that's get something like a knitting needle or a, cocktail, uh, or a chopstick. Very, very gently, not to damage your barrel, just check that it's all aligned and it sort of just drops down in place and we've got everything aligned and I'm just making just adjusting this a little bit and that's all now perfectly aligned. Number one thing though always safety first make sure you're safe make sure you've got nothing loaded up here keep your head away from the end of the barrel and attach it like so and you're good to go. Okay so we're back it's as simple as that really to connect it on so the things that you are notice in the video is the yellow part here this slots out like so now when you line this up, basically you put it in, you see me do it in the video, and you slot that in like so, and that helps you line it up with the barrel. You then use the, uh, the elastic bands to wrap it on using the lugs, so you see these little lugs here, it's the easiest way to do it. Um, elastic band it onto the end of your rifle, it'll fit with most rifles, as long as it's a round barrel, because that's what this is designed for. Um, it will fit with most things. Remember, remember, take that out, a lot of people forget and they end up shooting the thing. Um, take that out. And like I said in the video, uh, um, a chopstick or a knitting needle, just to double check, make sure, but be careful you don't wreck your barrel on that. But uh, so apart from that, it's actually quite simple. Now, um, I have experimented using different methods of doing it. The elastic bands are the easiest way to do it, but you can try these. I've tried these and they work. These are nice little Velcro straps that you get. So Velcro one side, the opposite on the other side. You can use them to attach it on. Get these on Amazon. I'll leave some links down below as usual. But um, yeah, quite, quite a nifty little device. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break out now and show you the functionality and how these buttons work and um, just give you a quick guided tour on them. Okay, so I'm just gonna run you through the basic functionalities. I'm gonna hold it at a slight angle here so you can see the little LCD display. Now we actually have three buttons up here. The top one being RST, uh, the middle one being FPS, and the bottom one being PDS. Now the RST button is your basically your menu option. You press it once and it will switch the unit on. And then it will auto switch itself off to save battery. Um, I think it's about 30 seconds to a minute or so. I have not actually timed it. Um, the middle button will actually then tell you the speed of your pellet in feet per second or meters per second, depending on what you've got the unit set to. And then the bottom one will actually tell you your um, your joules or your feet uh, foot pound, and that's basically your power. So your top one, menu, then you've got your speed, and then you've got your power buttons there. And it's quite simple. So I'm just gonna switch the unit on by pressing the RST button, and we get nice little symbols on there. And we can see the symbol on there. Basically, that's saying it's ready to shoot. Now, if I press the uh, the middle button, which is the speed, it's telling me what my last reading was. So it's remembered it from last time. So if I take a look at that, I was 502 uh, feet per second. 
Um, you know, there was hardly any air left in the rifle, it was an unregulated rifle. And if I press the bottom one, it will then tell me what my power is in, um, in this case, because I'm metric, uh, feet, uh, foot pounds, and if I look at that, it was 8.91. So obviously well below legal limit for the UK. Now, the way that you can uh, change all of this is if you press the top button and keep it pressed, it, what it will do is it will cycle through all of the menu options. Um, it will cycle through things like um, Imperial or Metric, um, so that you can change it. It will cycle through the pellet weight, so you can enter your pellet weight. It will also cycle through the legal limit, and you can put error corrections. And I'm not going to go too much into all of the menu options on here, but you press and hold that button, it will cycle through. When you let go of that button at the particular menu option, you can then edit it with the other two buttons. It's really quite simple. So I'm just going to press it on and while I can see it, and I'm going to press and hold it until I get to the pallet weight. And there we go, pallet weight is 15.9. So if I want to change that, I can just press the top button. And you can see I'm cycling through 15.2 or so, and I can use the bottom button to change the digits, the other digits. So it's just quite simple, easy. Comes all in the instruction manual, dead easy to do. Once I'm happy with that, I can then just hit select etc. So let's have a look and set my legal limit. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to keep the button pressed until I see the legal limit flash up. So I'm on pallet weight now, I'm in imperial now, and there we are. That's the, I just about make that out. So I'm at 12 a foot pound. And again, I can increase or decrease that. So if you want to be extra safe, you can set it at, let's say, 11.5, then you know you're definitely underneath. And every time you take a shot, it will just pop up legal or illegal up there. So really really simple operations in here the battery is housed inside here um, in, inside the unit it's just a small battery um, and it should last for absolutely ages because it's got the auto power off so that's just a quick run through of how to set it all up three simple buttons on here obviously this is the mark IV version um, nice and easy so what do i think of this well it's a neat very very neat little solution um, what I do like about it is it's cheap, um, it will give you your um, information that you need in metric or imperial, it will tell you your speed of your pellet, feet per second, meters per second, or the energy, because it does the calculation in it. So for example in joules, or as what most people will be interested in, is uh, foot pounds. So it's got those nice little features, it's got a nice little feature in here as well, as I said, where we could set um, what your legal limit is. And then it will tell you if you're legal or not legal. That's just a little bit of a gimmick, really. You know your legal limit's 12. And if it says 13, you know you're over. But it actually then does tell you. And the nice thing about it is you can set it a little bit lower if you want. So you can set it to 11.5 just to make sure that you're totally, totally safe. So quite a lot of little features packed into this, into this little device. Um, yeah, very, very useful. Easy to use. Um, so I'm, I'm actually quite impressed and the battery in it and the auto shut off, it lasts for ages, nice and small, and the size, you know, I've not got big hands and it's just palms or hand size really, fit into your glove, uh, into the top glove, uh, into your top pocket or into your gun bag, easy to attach, can be a bit fiddly but you get used to wrapping the elastic bands around there and like I said make sure that you line it, use an alternate method as well to do that. But there are a couple of things I don't like about this. Um, Number one, it's made of plastic and it's easy to drop and it's easy to break. Um, and uh, yeah, I can see why it's made of plastic because if it was metal and you didn't align this properly. The plastic has to be able to break in case you mess up with it. And trust me, lots of people have broken these. Um, because it's on the end of your rifle, you've got to make sure that you've got it aligned up perfectly because at the end of the day, you've got a pellet flying out the end and it's going through two little holes. And the way, obviously, this works is there's a sensor here and there's a sensor there. It's a fixed distance, it knows the time it took to break the two beams, and hence the reason it can work out the speed. But if you've got this misaligned, and the pellet comes out and smashes one of these, you're going to destroy the sensor. Now luckily, the where you get these from, there's an instruction manual and everything from, oh, didn't mention the manual, it's actually a very good manual that comes with it as well. It gives you all the functionality, it's just a printed paper, very easy to follow, very easy. But on in the manual there, they actually give you all the spare parts, because oh, trust me, I borrowed this off my dad, he shot it, so he's broken it, he's out of all the spare parts, and then I bet you lots of people out there, those that have already got one, have probably shot it as well, but you can get the spare parts for it quite simple. 
Um, but that's one thing I don't like about it. It's a bit cheap feeling and a bit plasticky, but I understand why. Um, and the other major thing I don't like about this, and I'm going to be brutally honest, and a lot of you will disagree with me, is I have always, always, always had it drummed into me. Keep away from the pointy end of the rifle. Why? Because it hurts. And if you've got magazines or anything nearby, you just got to be... And it just takes one second just to forget. And before you realise it, you're peering down the end of your barrel trying to attach this on. And you ended up with a pellet in your face. And trust me, it's going to sting. It's going to smart a bit. And that's what I just... Uh, I get it. I like it. I like the way it works. But I just do not like the way that this sits on the end of the rifle. You saw in the video, I was doubly careful, and especially for YouTube, because there's so many people out there who will just pick up on the smallest parts and complain. Fire the shots off, make sure it's off. Safety catch on, just in case. Put, keep the barrel pointing away from you. But when you're using this, I guarantee you that people using this will still have magazines loaded because they're trying to work out what their power is, etc. And they've still got a magazine up there. Mistakes are going to happen. I'm sure mistakes will happen. And that is what I don't like about this. It is a very good, handy little device. It works well. It's accurate. I've tested it against my F1 here. I've tested it against that. And within a couple of feet per second, it works. It's great. Um, you type in your pellet weight in here, set it into imperial metric, whatever you want. It does the job very well. I am just uneasy of should I say, I dare say, but beginners getting one of these and just throwing them on the end of the rifle without having safety drilled into them just goes against all my principles of what you should be doing in terms of a rifle that lot. So, would I recommend it? Uh, it's a 50-50 for me. If you want a chrono that is simple to work and effective and does the job and is accurate and you're safety conscious, knowing that you're going near the end of a rifle, then yes, I will recommend it. If you're somebody out there and you know who you might be who is a little bit lapsidaisical, a little bit forgetful, just be careful, just be careful because we may only be playing with air rifles, but some of you guys out there have got really powerful air rifles because you don't have the rules we've got. Air rifles can kill, just be careful. So, um, Hopefully that is quick review. Like I say, it's a very, very quick review, this one. Um, not much really to say about it, the CB625. Um, yep, really nice. If you find you know, like in this channel, please remember to subscribe. Um, smash that thumbs up, thumbs down button down below. Um, as usual, I'll leave some links down below for some of the usual stuff that I use on Amazon. And um, consider being a patron. I'll leave the link around. I can never remember what side it is. I think it's this side. I can't remember. You'll, you'll see it anyway. Um, so, as usual, I'll catch you next time, guys. And uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.